So one of the things that Reed Hoffman and I noticed is that companies were growing faster and more valuable than ever before. And we tried to figure out what was allowing this to happen. It applies when you are in a very particular kind of market with a very particular kind of opportunity. The way you can tell is you can focus on two key principles. Hi, I'm Chris Ye, and I'm best known as the co-author of Blitzscaling. That's a book that I wrote with my friend Reed Hoffman, the co-founder of LinkedIn, which is all about how companies can grow enormous multi-billion dollar businesses by prioritizing speed over efficiency to win a winner-take-most market. So obviously everyone's very interested in OpenAI, but OpenAI is also a great example of how the techniques of blitzscaling become important for building a great company. And with OpenAI, they began just building out product. That's wonderful, but the thing is, the number of users that your product has drives product value. It's played out in terms of the launch of the product, tapping into global distribution in order to grow quickly. It plays out in terms of the alliance with Microsoft. They've been able to continue to keep that product up and running and to grow even though it's the fastest growing product of all time. So the core principle of blitzscaling, which is to prioritize speed over efficiency in the face of uncertainty, is something that is not found in any single business school textbook. I know because I went to Harvard Business School. That was not something we were taught. Whereas in blitzscaling, our message is, no, no, sometimes you have to sacrifice efficiency and risk making mistakes in order to move faster. So the important thing to remember about blitzscaling is it's not a strategy you apply in every single circumstance. It applies when you are in a very particular kind of market with a very particular kind of opportunity. The way you can tell is you can focus on two key principles. The first is a winner take most market dynamic. You need to be in a market where the first company to achieve scale achieves enduring market leadership. And this can come about because of network effect that you have elements like community or you have elements like a platform network effect. If you don't build that in from the start, you won't have that winner take most market dynamic. The second part is equally important and that is that you have a distribution advantage. So your ability to grow depends on your distribution. You can think of it as a race where you're running against your competitors and you're trying to get to the finish line first. Your distribution is the thing that determines how quickly you can run. There, companies should really focus on either using something like virality that allows them to build on growth from original organic growth, but you can also bring in incentivized virality, something like Dropbox, where if you refer a new user, you get additional free storage. That's something you have to consider as you're designing your business model. So a lot of people ask, okay, is, is blitz scaling forever? But as we described, it only applies to certain circumstances. But it's also the case that blitz scaling is a difficult strategy to implement. It's not like, oh great, let me just grow and things will magically happen. As we all know, growth is hard and blitz scaling involves a level of growth that is uncomfortable and risky. So when you are prioritizing speed over efficiency, it means that you might be in danger of running out of money. And so if you do not need to blitz scale, it may be easier to actually pursue a slower growth strategy. But that doesn't work if you are actually in a blitz scalable market, if it's winner take most, because while you are taking your time, another competitor may be blitz scaling. The key is spending money in a way that is going to give you a better competitive advantage. And once they win that market, it doesn't matter how well you execute, you will never be able to catch up. So when a founder decides they're going to blitz scale their company, they have to prepare themselves for uncertainty. You are trying to figure out how to grow faster than your competitors. Your competitors are also aggressive entrepreneurs. They're also finding ways to grow quickly. And so as a result, the aggressiveness that's required means that you have to tolerate a lot of uncertainty and a lot of risk. And so in order to actually do blitz scaling, you often have to do things that are counterintuitive in comparison to conventional wisdom. So there are a couple of these counterintuitive examples, and I'll share one that has been very popular because it's probably one of Reed's most famous sayings. If you're not ashamed of your first product, you've launched too late. So launch a product you're ashamed of. Now this is really strange, right? Because we normally say we want to launch a great product. We want to launch a product that people love. But Reed's insight is we have the ability to rapidly iterate and improve our products. This is a lesson Reed learned with his first company, which was called SocialNet. What he discovered is they spent all this time perfecting all these little features they thought were important. And when they actually launched it, the customers ignored them, never used them. And so he took that lesson with him when he started LinkedIn. When he started LinkedIn, right when they were about to launch, one of the things that people said was, oh, you know what? We need to stop 
and delay the launch because we need to build the ability for people to find consultants on LinkedIn. And that sounds interesting, but tell you what, we're just gonna launch LinkedIn and then if people really clamor for it and say they want it, we'll go back and we'll build it. That's because read new, that which we think is gonna be essential to the user might not be, and the best way to improve the product is to get real world feedback and iterate. And so they launched LinkedIn and it turns out that's not what people wanted. The number one request that came in from LinkedIn users was very simple. I want to put my picture on my LinkedIn profile. And so launching a product that embarrasses you is a way of getting over your fear of, oh, what if it's not perfect? Guess what, it's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna have problems. And the reason is none of us are geniuses. None of us is smart enough to know exactly what the market wants. But you'd rather be fixing real problems based on real user feedback than trying to fix things based on your own intuition, which could very well be wrong. So the question I always get when it comes to blitzscaling is, okay, how do I prepare myself to blitzscale? Right? Is it just a matter of, of being aggressive? I'm like, no, 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 hold on. Aggression is not the point. Speed is the point. And the most important speed you can have is actually speed of learning. Because the world around us is constantly changing. The thing that worked three months ago may not work today. And so the thing you want to train yourself to do is to be what we call an infinite learner. Someone who is able to constantly learn new things, but more importantly, let go of old lessons. We all learn lessons in our lives, often from the things that helped us be successful. But that doesn't mean those lessons still apply. And so learning to let go of the lessons that made you successful in order to have room for the new lessons that will make you successful in the future is one of the most important things you could do as a blitzscaling entrepreneur. So there are a lot of misconceptions about how startups grow. Some people think that you just raise a lot of money and spend it on marketing and you can buy growth. To some extent you can, but you're not gonna buy sustainable success. That's why it's so important early on and as detailed in the book, The Lean Startup, that companies find product market fit. Without product market fit, no company can achieve long-term success. If you blitz scale before you achieve product market fit, that's very risky because if you blitz scale a product that doesn't yet retain its users, it may be that you're just spending money to buy temporary market share. The best time for a founder to implement blitz scaling is after achieving product market fit, but before the competitors begin to scale up. That's the ideal scenario. You've achieved product market fit and you know that you can benefit from throwing money into growth, but at the same time, you haven't fallen behind your competitors. If your competitors are starting to grow before they achieve product market fit, you may need to start growing earlier. That's that judgment call where you have to decide, can my competitors achieve product market fit as they scale or not? Now the issue is, it becomes nuanced. Let's say your competitor is scaling up very quickly. You have to ask yourself, is that competitor going to be able to achieve product market fit as they grow? Because if they do, and they've grown out in front of you, you won't be able to catch up with them. However, if you think that they're far from product market fit, you may let themselves go ahead and, and grow quickly and then swoop in and buy up their assets after they go bankrupt. This has happened many times in history as well. But if achieving product market fit occurs simultaneously with scaling up, you may need to blitz scale even before you achieve product market fit. One of the most fascinating stories about why blitzscaling is necessary is the story of Airbnb. So I want you to think back in time to when Airbnb was a much smaller company. It had about 30 or 40 people at the time. It was primarily in the United States. And that is when the Somwehr brothers of Germany decided they wanted to create an Airbnb clone. So they actually created a clone called Vimdu and they funded it with $100 million and they hired 400 people to build out the company. So it had $100 million 400 employees. Airbnb at that point had maybe 40 employees and $10 million of funding. So it is a sudden situation where Airbnb had gone from the leading company in the field into the David versus the Goliath of Vimdu. And the Somber brothers were also interested in starting Vimdu because they thought what they could do is they could merge Vimdu and Airbnb. And so that in the end, Vimdu shareholders would own 25% of the company, Airbnb shareholders would own 75% of the company. Well, this was a nasty shock to the founders of Airbnb because here there was a situation where now there was a competitor with 10 times as much money and 10 times as many people going after the same market. It would be very easy to just say yes to the Somver brother, to go ahead and accept this merger agreement, which would still allow them to keep most of the value, but it would involve giving up so much of their value and it would involve rewarding bad behavior. We don't want to set a precedent where people who just clone products get to extort people for their equity. And so what Airbnb decided to do is we're going to blitz scale. 
The term hadn't been invented yet, but that's essentially what they decided to do. We have to raise more money. We have to hire more people. We have to compete head to head with Vimdu in Europe so that we can outgrow them. And so that's exactly what they did. They raised $100 million of their own. They launched 12 different offices in Europe in the subsequent six months. And ultimately, they outgrew Vimdu. In fact, Vimdu went bankrupt in 2019. And Airbnb, thanks to the power of blitzscaling, of prioritizing growth for the sake of achieving a better competitive position, was able to become the dominant company we see today. So one of the things that is really new and that I'm going around the world talking about is the way that AI and blitzscaling interact. Remember the model of blitzscaling. Technology innovation triggers new markets and scrambles existing ones. Well, guess what? AI is doing that left and right. So we are looking at this tremendous change in the marketplace and that's gonna create those opportunities for blitzscaling, those opportunities for business model innovations, those opportunities for new companies. Reed told me he believes that there will be dozens of outcomes that are $10 billion plus just in the next couple of years as companies build out AI solutions of various kinds. So the message I wanna give people is AI is coming, it's absolutely gonna have a huge impact and it enables even more blitzscaling on several levels. For existing companies who are looking to blitzscale, AI and its ability to amplify human productivity allows you to grow more with fewer people and fewer resources. And the companies that leverage AI will be able to outscale their competitors. On the other side, AI-based companies can really tap into the principles of blitzscaling because AI really has strong winner-take-most market dynamics. Thanks to the fact that if you build a better model, you attract more users. If you attract more users, you have more data to build a better model to attract more users. There is this incredible virtuous circle that really helps the existing players like OpenAI. And we're gonna see this play out in many different AI-based markets, and we expect the blitz scalers that are being established right now in the next couple of years to ultimately dominate the world of AI. The level of growth that you go through with blitzscaling it's far beyond what a normal company goes through. And the company began growing at the rate of about 1% to 5% a day. It's growing like 10x per year. You as a founder, that the things that you did to get you from one stage to the next won't necessarily work when you get to that next stage. You have to blitz scale differently when you're in a bear market or when economic times are tough. 